I'll show you how you can adjust an unadjustable quartz clock. This is a cheap Chinese, very typical mechanism. And this one's got this sterling and noble, but uh, there are all kinds of names, brands, no brands uh, printed on them. They are all basically the same. As you can see, you've got the minute, the hour handle. This one doesn't have the seconds handle. However, this little mushroom at the top would be where the seconds handle usually is. And in the back of the clock, you can see that it says uh, unadjusted or unadjustable. And you can see in the back, just turn on the light in the phone camera, it says unadjusted and no jewels. No jewels because everything is made of plastic. It's a very simple, typical uh, mechanism. It works very well. These clocks usually run 10, 20 years with no problems. All you need to do is make sure to change the, replace the battery every year or so, so it doesn't leak. And if you do that, they will run for a very long time. And sometimes they are cherished as uh, some souvenir clocks. And this one is marked Sterling and Noble clock company that all kinds of names printed on them. It doesn't really mean much, doesn't mean anything. They're all cheap and you can pick them up uh, sometimes at thrift stores for a couple of bucks. This one doesn't have the seconds handle, but we'll make our own seconds handle of the tape. This is a masking tape, so let me just stick it here. Now, why do we need the seconds handle? Uh, what I'm going to do is hang the clock next to a, a to an atomic clock and that way after one day or a couple of days I can determine whether the clock uh, with the blue seconds handle is running fast or running slow compared to the atomic time and if it runs fast well now the I think the handle got stuck because it doesn't have the proper shape so we need to lift it up raise it up a little bit now that'll be fine if, so if the clock runs a little bit fast, and this one does, it, it runs about one second per day forward. So in uh, two months will be one minute fast, will be one minute fast, which is not acceptable. It's, it's really too fast. Accurate clocks usually stay within five seconds a, a year. Uh, this one is a little bit fast, but I'll show you how to slow it down. If your clock runs slow, then you'd have to replace, to be able to adjust the speed of it, you'd have to replace the quartz element. You can buy them from China, and they are not really expensive. On eBay, there is a, a bag of 50, will cost you a couple of bucks, so they're not really expensive. And out of the bag, you can replace, keep replacing until you find those that are running faster, make your clock run faster, and then you will slow it down with a capacitor, homemade capacitor, I'll show you in a moment how to do it. Okay, I have removed the mechanism out. I just unscrewed the little nut in here. I pulled the handles off it and I'm going to use the board here just to make... There you go, that would be perfect. And let me show you the latches. And there are three. One is on this side. This is the latch that you have to pry. There's another one right here just have to uh, pry this one very gently and there's a third one on that side. Now I did pry it open and I would not recommend working on the clock because it's very easy to scratch and very hard to remove any scratches or any stains but I'm doing it only so it's easier for me to show and hold everything in place. Now this is what it looks like inside. It's very simple. This is the, the the handle adjusting wheel so uh, this can stay in we don't need to remove it for the moment and as you can see it corresponds with the wheel in the bottom it will go to the bottom now what you can see here is the quartz element which is soldered to the board uh, on the other side and it's right here it's sticking out and what we will do is remove the whole thing and then I will solder a couple of wires magnet wires just like this and I have it from another coil another little transformer and I'm going to show you how to make a adjustable uh, condensator so capacitors so that way 
you will be able to slow down the fast running clock. This is what the board looks like uh, on the other side. And what we are interested in is just the two soldering points for the quartz, which is one here, the other one here. Also, uh, these two paths, contact paths, are the ones that you need to pay attention to. Uh, maybe wipe it with a Q-tip uh, dumped in rubbing alcohol, because this is where the electricity is being picked up uh, by the clock. In older clocks, especially the ones that are in moist environment, if these pads get oxidated, they will lose contact and the clock will, uh, will be stopping. Very unfortunately, and this is where the electricity is being picked up from, and these are the two steel springs. And unfortunately, you cannot solder to these. They are very hard to solder, so impossible. Uh, so if you need to have, if you need to make proper contacts uh, with these, what you may do is wind a wire, magnet wire around them, and then solder it to the pads. The battery wires have been wound on the contacts and they have been soldered onto the board and I hope the focus will catch properly but this is the one and the other. Uh, this is in enamel which means that they will not short so you don't have to worry. This, this is like a good insulation for 1.5 volts and I made them longer but they will be laid out of the way of the wheels so they will not interfere with the work of the clock. Uh, but they will supply the battery without any hindrance. And you can also see the two wires uh, that are connected to, in parallel to the quartz element. And these will stick out and they will be twisted together to make a capacitor that will be adjustable by cutting off bit by bit until the time is accurate. Okay, everything is done here, and I have routed the wires in a way that would not interfere with the work of the clock. But you can see that the capacitor wire, which we'll take care of in a moment, uh, I used a slot, the opening that already was in the clock for whatever reason. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to run it this way, and there is a winding around the post. You can see here just to keep around this post right here just to keep it secure so it doesn't uh, lose capacity and time uh, over time now you can see the gears are all aligned properly and on the corresponding part you can see where the gears should uh, fall in all these little dimples that you see down there uh, these should correspond uh, they will nicely correspond with all these gears so um, once you you test it if it's working and I can do it by inserting the battery and when you see the step motor the yellow gear uh, picking then you know that you are fine here you go so because the gears are still loose they will jump uh, in different directions but anyway the clock is working so we can remove the battery we don't need it for now and we'll just snap everything back in place by lining up very gently this cover and uh, remember we have the three latches two on the side and all we have to do is just line them up like this and all you do is just clicking in place and this should be fine the two handles have been aligned to point to 12 o'clock and we have this little pin instead of a second so I'm going to put it in put it right there and this will be the indicator for the seconds now what I will do since this doesn't have a seconds handle I'm going to have one that I made out of masking tape and this will be glued right here just to show whether the clock aligns with atomic clocks. I have analog atomic clock, so now it's the time to put the battery in and get it to work. Now you can see the sticking wire, which is twisted, 
now what I plan on doing is, is see how much will the wire the twisted wire this capacitor is that way for uh, over the overnight and see what happens uh, the following day now we can see that the clock is running and I will be comparing the seconds handle with the seconds handle on the atomic clock if that's the only way to to keep it accurate and I will see how much it slows down with that capacitor and then we'll just cut it off until the clocks run accurate runs accurate and accurate clocks means that you want it to keep within about five seconds per year if you manage to do that then your clock will be very accurate and will be just as good almost as good as an atomic clock